Over the years, we've had plenty of people curious about finding gold. They're particularly interested in finding the big piece of gold, the retirement nugget. Well, here is my answer to that question. Let me start off by saying that science is often considered just as a way of explaining our surroundings. Sometimes the truth is subjective, and sometimes there are many truths. I like the one I'm about to reveal to you because it works for us. It can go anywhere because the whole town is basically gold And filled. appears to fit all the facts on where gold has been found in the past. But just as you come out of the town, it's all gold filled area. In fact, half the town is built on gold. There's a gold detector shop right there. It's white. And all just around this area here, are massive gold fields. Particularly in the large gold nugget producing areas like Denali in Victoria, Australia. The old timers found most of the gold in these gullies, but not all of it. And the modern day electronic Prospector has a big advantage these days. This means some old time is settled around here. See that gully there to the left? This is because it is quite easy to cover a large area of ground in a relatively short time span. The only problem is that the metal detector is not very effective at finding very fine gold. In some parts the soil is very fine and flowery and other parts you've got piles of quartz and all the signs of gold. Sometimes evidence of mineralization and old time diggings is not so obvious but if you look carefully you will see here that it looks like it's been dug away and samples have been taken to check for gold. Uh, we'll just check that area around that pothole. Just, I've got a very strong magnet here. In fact, on many gold fields, pieces over a quarter of an ounce in weight are particularly rare, and some areas only have fine gold in the drips. There we go. It's highly mineralized area. We couldn't have picked a more perfect day. It's absolutely glorious. Perfect temperature, really serene. And there's an old timer's digging right there. What's that coil like, Dan? It's nice and light compared to the DD. It's the dream. It's feel like there's no bungee shop, it doesn't even feel like there's anything there. Well, many come off using the other one anyway. But on some gold fields, pieces over a quarter of an ounce in weight are quite common. And these are the fields that are most productive to the modern day electronic prospector. Just testing the coil. It's not too bad depth. So you can hear it. It definitely seems to be a little bit, tiny little bit more powerful than the 3000. However, nowadays the modern gold prospector now needs to look further afield as many of these areas are becoming depleted as the modern rush to find gold has led to some remarkable performance upgrades in detector electronics over the past 30 years or so. But if you want to find gold, all you have to do is go to the right spot and then keep out of the lighter soil. You have to find this really, really soft, light soil right next to the gold fields. And what we've got to do is look for a patch that the old time has missed. Just bear with me a second and I'll explain what I mean by that. The softer, light soil only contains lighter materials and trash left over from the old timers. The gold is nearly always very separate and found in the heavy material areas 
usually with pieces of quartz in the mix. The gullies always have the heavier items at the lowest point. It is the same with detecting gold on the beach sands. Storms act like an old timer's pan. The storms shuffle the items and the currents cause gullies where heavier items become deposited according to weight, often near rips or cuts or low spots in the wet sand. In the case of panning, the gold sits on the bottom and the lighter stones and material is washed out of the pan and discarded. Often heavier gold items are found in areas where they get stuck, either on rocks or heavy clay or on the bottom of ancient riverbeds, sometimes at the bottom of an ancient waterfall or where the water flows and slows down on the outside of a river bends or even trapped amongst the roots of plants and trees. But the gold nuggets most accessible to the metal detector are the larger pieces closer to the outcrop or where they come out of the ground in the quartz reef. Jump over here. Right. You can see how the, the diggings are getting shallower and shallower. They continue up on the other side of the road. So what I'm going to do is hopefully the ground stays right and I'm going to go down further down. Let me try to explain what I believe happens here. My theory is that when the earth first formed, heavier materials spewed out from the centre of the earth to compensate for the weight differences and irregularities on the surface. Similar to how we often put lead weights on a car wheel to compensate for imbalances and enable a smoother ride. Or how centrifugal force keeps a steel ball running around the outside of a roulette wheel until it loses speed and falls into a slot in the centre of course. The heavier materials come to the surface to balance the weight differences. Whether it's true or not doesn't really matter but I have found that the idea is helpful for when you are looking for your own gold pieces. My advice is that if you want to find gold on the gold field areas then you have to keep out of the lighter earth because it only contains rubbish and other light materials. The rest is often prime nugget producing areas particularly in areas like the Nolly and many other gold fields in Australia and possibly the world. There's that clay. Big amounts of it. I don't want to smash with more nuggets. Have a listen, see, it might be something small on the top. Still enough. Sounds like there's two signals. It's a yeah. double signal. It's, it could, if you're lucky, it could be two pieces of gold or one table. I don't know. I don't think there's not a signal. I think there might be two. Mm. Anyway, I guys. We're breaking it up. Ooh. I'm sure there's another one because I, I, I heard Makes something big. I heard something big, mate. Deep. Anyway, we've got multiple signals in here. I can spin a piece of gold. Anyway, we've got multiple signals in here. Um, yeah. We can hear them everywhere. We need to, can someone get some plastic bag so we can grab all this dirt as well? Yeah, hang on. Hang we finding them last time. Hold the coil still. I've got to try it. Yeah, now wave, wave the coil over. Picking your camera up. All right, okay, hang on, the camera's in the field. It's right there. There it is, you got it. That's it, hang on. Hang on. No, I want to do this one, hang on. Is it a gold nugget? Yeah, it has to be. 
has to be. You see how big is it? Yeah. It is. Shiny. Yes. Shiny. Shh. Hang on. It's a gold nugget. Uh, in the dark, guys. First of hopefully it's good. Hang on. There's a combination of three detectors to find that, and we think there's a big one down there. But when it comes to gold prospecting, an interesting point to note is that it's nearly impossible to know where the heavy materials are simply by looking at the vegetation and geology because trees and grasses adapt to the different ground conditions. There's another set of diggings up there. So anywhere around here, it could be the odd piece. This area doesn't look like much, but it produced some of the biggest nuggets in the world. Often what looks like flat ground now could have once been a gully. And sometimes there's a very light thin layer of fine earth on the surface, but underneath can be very rich in gold. It is also interesting to note that it is pretty conclusive to assume that all gold is associated and indeed originates from quartz veins, but is often found separately simply because it becomes dislodged in the drifts over time. They just kept on digging holes when they got the right sort of material. They could tell by the quartz and what kind of stuff they were digging out. There's one of the holes there. They just kept digging until the quartz and whatever they were looking for run out. Then they would try somewhere else over there, for example. These quartz outcrops are sometimes marked by small hills and have particularly well adapted or unique thin grass and trees which are difficult to spot by the naked eye. Or they might have large pieces of embedded quartz rather than loose pieces on the side of a hill. The gold from these outcrops are often rough, angular and much larger as they have not travelled very far. When the gold is found smooth and rounded, they are said to have shed far from the outcrop, and this is an accurate indicator of a nearby quartz reef containing gold. Finding the large ones is all about being in the right spot at the right time. In other words, there has been a staggering amount of gold taken from these areas by modern electronic prospectors alone far more than nearly anyone is willing to admit. Ask yourself, if you found a large piece of gold, would you tell anyone exactly where and when you found it? Keep in mind that we have had our entire collection stolen from us. But gold on the beach sands can be explained in very similar terms. 14 carat, just out about waist deep in the water, um, third target of the day, a couple of 20 cent pieces and then out popped. Always remember that the heavier items on the low tide always behave the same as the tail in a miner's pan. Yeah, that's pretty heavy too, that's about 7 grams, that's a real good solid ring that one. And the heavier items always group together. However, one of the most important aspects with metal detecting is the sharing of experiences of finds, especially stories with friends and family. We go around here. That's a, that's a nice we find there. Yesterday, found on a couple of fin, old really fin. Generally, but yeah, it's been have you ever nice been under the bridge before? No. You haven't been under the bridge. Only on the other side. On that side. Putting our lucky finds on video reminiscing over some of the often strange but true stories makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, I got another signal here. Double signal. In other words, very few activities match the surprise of finding gold items in the sand, especially after hours of digging up rubbish. But to share those experiences with others is priceless and to get it on video is even better still. Normally I dig up many target items to find one gold item and think that it was well worth the effort but I've been a little bit lucky lately and
managed to recover two nice gold items pretty much straight away. Got a hole. You got one? Have a look. Hey, baby. Hang on. What That's is it? An old one. It's a ring. It's a very Can old one. Can you see? You've smashed it with a shovel by the looks. You see that big dent in yeah. it? Hold it in the sun, see. You ripper. Absolutely. And yes, there's a good chance there are more there, but unfortunately not this time. We'll try again some other time, maybe after the seas have washed the sand a bit more. The ring was extraordinarily deep and was only a whisper of a signal and it must have been sitting on its end as I put the shovel straight into it and buckled the ring. I was going to leave it because items that deep are often not worth the effort but I was thinking a little exercise wouldn't do me any harm so I dug it up anyway and it turns out that it's right in this spot that we expected to find the heavier items. Well down about a foot and a half. Yeah. Thought it was another pull tab. Right. Apparently I smashed a pick straight, my shovel straight into it, so you can see the damage there. That really And that is a, shame. a really, really old ring, that one. Extremely yep. old, and you can see there's recent damage on it. It's white gold and yellow gold. I don't think you can get that close. The ring must have been underground for a hell of a long time, as it is quite corroded. I'm not going to bother cleaning and repairing this ring because it'll probably break. <laughs> 